Hey guys, I'm Matt. Now, all this talk about government policy and youth action and bettering our future and all that kind of stuff is all well and good, but it's hungry work, right? You know, like, it'd be good if we could continue on in this fashion, but I think we should take a moment to eat some trash. But I've got a bit of a sweet tooth, and I'm all about the profiterol. You know what I'm talking about? It's that little uh, pastry dish, little cake thing. You kind of like, like cream puffs, but you get them in a big cluster. Got like a bit of a David Jones food court kind of vibe. It's chocolate sauce, or is it? Just look, come inside. I'll show you. I don't actually know how to spell profiterol. Really? But that's okay. That is okay because a quality profiterol requires excellent ingredients, significant preparation. It's a combination of skills, a combination of parts, knowledge, experience, and a youth-like tenacity. Much like the Office for Youth Policy Action Team's feelings on dealing with opportunity in our state. Which is rather convenient, really. So I've come to my grandma's house. She's a wonderful cook. She's going to give me some advice on making my own profiterol. So, Grandma, tell us about the profiterole. Ah, uh, well, the profiterole is a dish which dates back to the 19th century, with its roots in the 17th century. Mm. It requires a lot of planning and thought and adherence to the traditional method. Otherwise, it won't work. Now, traditionally, profiteroles are presented in a cluster, but each individual profiterole requires the same amount of preparation. Otherwise, the whole will suffer. It requires a lot of uh, thought and, and consideration. Yeah, but it tastes good though, right? Oh, yes, of course. All right, good. Let's get to it. <laughs> oh, no. I don't make desserts. Time to call on the professionals. All right, so I'm here with Jean-Louis. He's going to show us how to do make profiterole. 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 We're going to we make it the right way. Yep, we with choux pastry. Yes. Let's profiteroles do are made with choux pastry. To make profiteroles, you need a wooden spoon. You have to have your, your ingredients really well measured. It's a pretty exact science. Yeah, that's can't right. mess around with a profiterole. Yeah, you can't. No. How long did you train to be a pastry chef? Well, I started, I started was about, about 15. Eh? And it took me, you know, it took forever. To get to a good level where you feel comfortable, yeah. uh, it might take 10, 15 years. Right, uh, so the chances of me being able to do this sort of later this afternoon, probably. Just quickly, I, how do you spell profiterol? We've had some trouble with that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I reckon it's about time I gave making my own profiterole a shot. Let's do it. So I'm beginning to get an understanding of how this whole profiterole thing works. Now the important thing is it took a combination of different viewpoints, a combination of different ingredients to make the thing work. Much like the Office for Youth Policy Action Team's Opportunity Lens, which proposes the establishment of a task force comprised of different community members that are representative of all South Australians, especially the youth, in order to tackle issues of disadvantage in our state. It's like a metaphor. I kind of just wanted to eat the cake. Okay, so check this out. I bought this. Mine look awful. Just really bad. <laughs>